All right, welcome to series number three in the prospecting series. Uh, if you were with us last time, we talked about calling expires, and we talked about the day before that about calling for sale by owners. And I just can't tell you how much, if you're new in real estate, I want you to call some for sale by owners. If nothing else, it just gives you an opportunity to go look at some houses and get used to them. But when you call for sale by owners, when you call for sale by owners, here's what I want you to do. I want you to get this attitude right, because if you get this attitude wrong, it creates stress that you don't need. But I want you to take this attitude. You call Mr. For Sale by Owner. Now, if you followed what I said yesterday on the tape, what did I say? I said, Mr. For Sale by Owner, if I had a customer, could we work something out? He said, yes. I said, great. Could I come out and take a look at your house between two or four? He said, sure. So I've got an appointment to come out and look at his house at four. Now, I've got an appointment to do what? To come out and look at his house. I've got an appointment to come look at his house. I don't have an appointment to come do a listing presentation and tell him 21 reasons why he should list with me. I have an appointment to come look at his house. Now, that's what I have an appointment to do, and that's what I'm going to do, and that's what I want you to do. Now, we're going to increase our skill level over time but I'm assuming your skill level is pretty much zero now. In other words, I'm assuming you haven't been out to see a hundred for sale by owners. Because if you had, you don't need to be watching this video. You'd be making your own video. Now, but I've got an appointment to go look at his house. Now that's my appointment, but I've got an ulterior motive. And my ulterior motive is to get him to fall in love with me to get him, Mr. For Sale By Owner, Mrs. For Sale By Owner, to fall in love with me. I want them to like me very much after they've talked with me for 10 minutes. Now, if you're gonna do that, you gotta concentrate. Now, if somebody came to me and said, Ron, I have an appointment with a very important person tomorrow. He is very important. He's like very important. And it's imperative to me that he liked me. Could you give me one sentence of advice? My sentence of advice would be, let him talk 75% of the time. Shut your mouth and listen to what Mr. Important has to say. If you want people to like you, you have to let them do most of the talking. So be prepared for that. Now here's the deal. We're gonna go out and see Mr. For Sale by Owner. Don't overcomplicate this. Don't, uh, and, and don't think I'm going out to get a listing. You're not going out to get a listing. Get that thought out of your head. If you wanna get a listing, call expires. So call Mr. For Sale by Owner. You go out there to see him, introduce yourself. By the way, I always give him a business card when I first meet him. Uh, always give him a business card when I first meet him. I hand him a business card and I say, here, keep this forever. Now don't take my word for it, that usually evokes a chuckle. It's been my impression if you can make them laugh, you can make them list. And I like to give them a little levity. That was funny one time 20 years ago. I've been saying it 20 years since then. But get out there and say hello to them. Now, I want you to ask lots of questions. Now. If you can't think of questions to ask, get yourself a little booklet like this and write down questions. Get yourself a form. Where do kids go to school? How much are your taxes? Uh, is there any new improvements you've made on the house? How far is it to the nearest grocery store? How long have you all lived here? Uh, where are you moving next? Have you already bought a house? Are your payments current? Uh, uh, gee, where'd you get that beautiful painting there? That is absolutely fabulous. Now, just ask lots, lots, lots of questions. Don't be telling them about your grandchildren. Don't be telling them about your cat. They don't want to hear that stuff. They want to tell you about their grandchildren. They want to show you pictures of their kids. Don't be telling them stuff. Be asking them stuff. Now, 
By the way, we're talking 10, 12 minutes max here. So what are our main goals when we go out there? Number one, I, I mentioned that rejection stuff. I don't want to experience any rejection. I don't want you to experience any rejection. So don't ask any questions that you can be rejected. It's hard to reject something on, gosh, where'd you get that lovely painting? I mean, there's no rejection in that. I want them to fall in love with you. Now, is there any magic to this? Well, there's dozens of books written about how to establish rapport. Uh, and by the way, if you need to read some, read some. But there's some basic stuff. Number one, if you got an appointment at 2 o'clock, you be knocking on that door at 2 o'clock, not 2.05. Uh, by the way, I just listed a house that we own up in North Carolina. I had an appointment with three realtors, one at 10, one at 11.30, and one at 1 o'clock. Three out of three, not a single one of them was on time. If they had been, it would have been the tiebreaker because uh, I was not overly impressed with any single one. I would have listed with the one that was on time, but not a single one of them was on time. So be on time, uh, dress right. If you don't know what right is, ask around, check around. Uh, it's different in Key West than it is in Boston, but uh, check around. Now, when you meet people, you want people to like you. Look for common ground. If you play golf and they play golf, you either play golf because there's their golf club sitting in the, uh, in the, in the garage or wherever. So you got an opportunity. Oh, do you play golf? Now, don't tell them your golf stories. Listen to their golf stories. Uh, put a big old smile on your face. I just can't tell you how important a smile is. And ask questions, ask questions, ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. Compliment them. Compliment them on how pretty their house is, how lovely the neighborhood is, how well they're dressed, uh, uh, thanks for seeing me, uh, whatever. And use their name. Now, I'm a first name guy. I've been a first name guy since, since I was 21 years old. I firmly believe if you can't get on a first name basis with people, you're not going to make much, uh, do much business with them. There's a few exceptions to that. However, there's a few exceptions to that, but uh, you know, the best thing to do when you meet somebody, say, hello, how are you? I'm Ron Clymer. They say, I'm Joe Smith. Can I call you Joe? 99 times out of 100, they'll say yes. Sometimes they might say, no, everybody calls me Sarge or everybody calls me Bubba or whatever. They say, oh, what's with that, Sarge? And they say, well, I was in the in the military for years and it's just kind of stuck with me. And by the way, if everybody calls them Sarge, you call them Sarge and uh, use their name. Let them talk, let them talk, let them talk. If you feel the urge to talk, you need to learn to quell that urge. They play golf, you play golf. They got a shotgun on the wall, you hunt birds. Don't tell them you're hunting stories. Listen to their stories. And uh, now, Love their house. I don't care what it is, I love it. This is great, this is gorgeous, this is beautiful, this is fabulous, oh, this is just uh, love their house. I cannot tell you how many houses I've listed through the years because I loved them. Nobody else loved them, I loved them. And uh, by the way, if they tell jokes, laugh at their jokes, laugh at their jokes. And just get out there and do the things you would do when you want somebody to like you and don't do the things. Now, by the way, it's hard to get people to like them when you're telling them their carpet's worn out. It's hard to get people to like you when you're telling them their neighborhood is the pits. By the way, if their neighborhood's the pits, what are you doing calling them in the first place? And uh, so get out there and uh, just do the things that get them to like you. Ask them questions and listen to the answers. Look them straight in the eye and just listen. I don't care if their story's 20 minutes long. They're loving it if you're listening to it. So do that. Now, y'all come to my 45 hour sales training class and I'll teach you a lot more stuff about rapport and mirroring and all that stuff, but just do the basics. Just get out there and, 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 just get them to like you. Just pretend that this is like the most important person on the planet 
and uh, you want to make sure that they that they like you not like you but like you a lot and so get them to fall in love with you now in about 10 minutes that's about how long it takes me to tour a house you go look at the bedrooms you go look at the family room you walk out in the backyard and a lot of times you come in the garage and you find yourself in the garage and uh, you know it's like it's time to go you've seen the house and assuming they like you assuming they like you what I want you to do now is ask them a question the answer to which would indicate that they need your help by the way I'm gonna have a sip of this Zephyr Hill spring water you know they bottle this down in Pasco County in Florida and uh, a lot of people think that uh, Pinellas County St. Petersburg a lot of people think that's where the all the old people in Florida live and that's true but their parents live up in Pasco County just north of there and that's where the Zephyr Hills come from up there from the Crystal Springs it's great water anyway um, so here we are We've been out there 10 minutes, we've complimented them, we've admired their stuff, we've told them they're great, and uh, we've asked lots of questions, and by the way, you can ask some real estate related questions. Personally, I'd rather ask about their grandchildren. I'd rather ask about that uh, sailfish hanging on the wall uh, than ask about, you know, their mortgage or, uh, you know, or those linen drapes or whatever. But. Uh, I personally like asking about stuff that they like talking about. You can tell what people like talking about. They have it out on display. And uh, Now, um, I got what I call the five roads to a second appointment. And one of them is a CMA, a competitive market analysis. Another one is contracts and closing costs. Another one is financing information. Another one, which I don't use because it's not for me, is general fix-up tips. And another one is just a listing presentation. Now, here's the way this works, and it has to work with questions. By the way, I'm going to do another video on asking questions. You have to master the art, and it is an art, of asking questions. You can't tell people stuff. You have to ask people stuff. And if you can't learn to do that, you're never going to make the big bucks in real estate. You can't tell your way to sell success. You have to ask your way to sell success. But let's just take contract and closing costs. I've been out there about 10 minutes. I've admired their painting on the wall. I've admired their shotgun hanging in the den. And I've commented about their fishing rods out in the garage. I fish too. And um, so we got a little common ground. They seem to like me. And I say, listen, let me ask y'all a question. If a guy walked in here right this minute and said, I'll take it. Do y'all have a contract to write up? Or are you going to call an attorney? How are you going to handle it? I said, well, we really hadn't thought about that. I said, well, it's better to think about it before it happens. You know something, if you like, I could bring you out the contract that we use at XYZ Realty and uh, spend about 10 minutes, make you an expert on filling it out and show you how to use it and it sure save you some aggravation. If, uh, does that, do you feel like that'd be a benefit to you? They say, yeah. I say, well, great. How about if I, uh, how about if I come back, uh, say, to, tomorrow, same time? Is that good for you? Yeah, come on back tomorrow. Okay, and so I can, uh, and I, by the way, I just tell them. They say, Ron, why are you doing this? I say, well, I'll tell you the truth. It's kind of like watching a TV show. It's kind of like watching a TV show. You watch a TV show, you got to listen to a little commercial. I might give a little commercial for XYZ Realty, but is that okay? And they'll almost always say yes. You can take any one of those and say, let me come back tomorrow, show you what I've got. You can just do a listing presentation. Say, listen, let me ask you a question. Why are y'all marketing this house yourself? Well, 
we want to save the commission. If I could come back and show you how to save the commission and get me to work for you for practically free, would that be a benefit to you? I say, yeah, can you do that now? No, I can't do it now. I've got another appointment in about 10 minutes, about nine minutes away from here. But uh, I could sure do it at the same time tomorrow. How about if I come back tomorrow? They say, okay. So you come back and you're prepared to do a listing presentation. Now, I'm not telling you that I think this works. I didn't read this in a book somewhere. I have done this for 24 years, right out on the street in Orlando, Florida. And uh, you know, you can't tell me it doesn't work because it works. It works as good today as it ever did. But you gotta get out and see some people. Now, by the way, what if you hit five out of five? They said no. Five more, they all said no. Well, you must be doing something wrong. You might be working on that. But even so, you've gone out and looked at 10 houses. You left your card with 10 people. Uh, by the way, had a guy call me one time for sale by owner. I've been out to see him, I don't know, two months ago. He called me up. He said, Ron, uh, I want you to come out and list the house. I said, oh, what happened? He said, nothing happened. I just got tired of doing what I was doing. Well, I always ask people, you know, when I'm sitting down and they're signing the listing form, why'd you call me? He said, Ron, I had about 10 realtors come out and look at the house just like you did. He said, uh, number one, you were the nicest. I appreciate that. He said, but number super one, you're the only one that sent me a thank you card. Every for sale by owner I have ever gone to see in my entire life, when I get back to the office, I take a handwritten thank you card. Dear Joe, thanks for taking the time to show me your house, Ron. And anything, you know, we talked about uh, his, you know, hope to see you at the fishing spot, hope to see you over at Jenny Park someday or something. Anything we ever talked about, I would just pass that on. A little, little comment, and I mean, I just do that. It's beyond a habit, and it needs to be a habit with you. And you can bet your life I put my business card in that letter because about five times out of ten, uh, after they picked their teeth with my business card, they probably threw it in the trash can after I left a lot of times. And so I sent them a new business card, and uh, in today's world, you got that constant contact with email drips and all that kind of stuff if, if you're into that. But you got to go see people. And I'm gonna close with that, folks, because I want you to get out there and see people. I want you to go say hello to them. I'm telling you, nothing is gonna happen until you get face to face, eyeball to eyeball with somebody. And anybody that tells you for sale by owners are not good prospects, you find out what their definition of a prospect is. Somebody that needs or wants your product, can't afford it, and is going to buy it from you or your competitor in the near future. They're going to list with you or they're going to list with somebody else very soon. Thank you so much. We'll be in touch.